Yes, a hotel in London. BBC on the TV. Come on, it's almost traditional now. <laughs> Hello, welcome, good afternoon, um, yes, as per usual, hotel room in London, BBC News on the TV, and uh, yeah, all good, nice and early today, because I'm winding down now for the end of the season, I'm not doing the big coaches anymore, I'm working for the sister company which does uh, smaller coaches, they're like 19 seat is the one I've been told I've got winding it down for the end of the season something a bit smaller for a couple of weeks and then after this back on the trucks and I've already been contacted by the agency asking me when I'm finishing so that's pretty much all set up, ready to go I've just got to sort out a few bits of paperwork once I get back, and then that is sorted. All good to go. So yes, as you can see, <clears throat> I've had a few days off between my last trip and this trip. So I've got to shave that off at some point. <clears throat> uh, late this evening, so I'll do that. And then, yeah, probably head up to where the depot is now, see what it's all about see how it's laid out, uh, see if my coach is up there, and then come back and get rid of this, so I'm all ready for tomorrow. Heading off to Cornwall, nice little seven day trip out there back and then pick up another coach out there and back, two Cornwall trips back to back and then that's my season done till next summer on the tracks should be somewhere along here on the left hand side that's what I was told anyway hmm there's no gate along the top edge that's where I was told it was going to be where is everywhere Ah, here we are. Silver mini coaches and a port cabin. Looks good to me. Of course, of course, it's not going to be easy. My coach is not here. Can't find any paperwork with my name on it. Can't find the fuel cards in here. So we're doing well, doing well. Like the three major things we can't find, but who knows? I've got a little while, I've made sure I've come in early for this very reason. So I'll continue to have a look around and see what I can find. Okay, so this isn't my one. It's a 17 plate, so I'm hoping it's going to be similar. It's not exactly the same as my one. Uh, so I'm just having a nose round really to get used to it. 19 seater. Leather seats, ooh. Um, electric passenger door, which is on this particular one seems to be getting stuck at the top. Looks like an automatic, it's a Mercedes Sprinter that's been turned into a coach. Electric rear boot at the back, <clears throat> just push that button there and it opens up. Taco, obviously, because it's more than seven seats. Fridge couple of compartments down the sides for bits and bobs lip the throttle says compartment down there compartment down that side only thing I don't know that's the diesel so I've no idea where the ad blue is and I've no idea how to get the bonnet open to check if the add blue thing is under there but this is the boot all of this this whole thing opens up and it 
goes actually, it goes up to about the wheels, I think. Of the luggage space, there's quite a bit of luggage room under there. As long as people don't bring too big a bags. And yeah, not too bad. Hopefully the one I get tomorrow is the same. I found the fuel cards. Fuel cards are in there. Paperwork. Um, yeah, just try and find where on earth This bonnet catch is. Let's see if this door's still stuck. Yup, it is. Don't know why it's catching on at the top there for some reason. Right. So that's that one looked at because it's a 17 plate much like my one is or will be once it's arrived um, the only other one's 12 plate and a 16 plate which is kind of annoying and then some vans and cars those ones which are of no use to me <clears throat> um, that's locked that's locked that's locked keys are back yeah so um yeah, hopefully my mini coach is the same as that one because it's also 17 plate but um yeah it's also right hand drive which will be the first time in six months that i've done that because yes yeah, so i have been back here but i don't have cars anymore i only have motorbikes so And switching back and forth on the road is easy enough. Switching back and forth on the vehicle, I've no idea. So I've made the transition to the left-hand drive, now I've got to come back to the right. That's an ominous looking cloud. Mm. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's kind of good though, because I was wondering if I was going to have to go back from left-hand drive coaches to right-hand drive trucks which are right-hand drive and bend in the middle whereas the coaches are the opposite um, so yeah at least I get a nice easy transition right-hand drive rigid then right-hand drive bendy coach no not coach um, truck and I haven't even finished doing the summer season on this yet and the agency are already contacting me to see when I'm going to finish. Come on. Everything's been awkward. All right, so that's that done. Can't check into the hotel for another half hour. Um, so, my head down to the office, see if I can pick up my uh, certificate. And that ominous cloud is now raining. So I was right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna head down to the office, see if I can pick up my certificate for passing training. So I forgot to pick it up last time. And it's supposed to be open till four o'clock, so I've got an hour and a half to get down there. And then I can check into the hotel. And now it's really raining. Lovely. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I check into the hotel. Hopefully my coach will get back tonight. And then probably come down a bit later and check it out so here we are I came back a bit later on last night and the guy had just arrived so I have had time to check this vehicle out had a shave had a shower hair looks lovely um, it's 
a little bit of a struggle. Where are you off to? Get back here. Oh, that will have to do. Um, it's a bit strange. But not completely alien being on the right. It actually isn't going to take that long to get back used to driving on the right. Which is cool. I may now be fully able to just jump left hand drive, right hand drive, left hand side of the road, right hand side of the road. Straight away just like that without having to think about it anymore. But the proof of the pudding will be in next year when I come back. So we'll find out then. But for now, let's head to this mega posh hotel. And um, pick up these old people. You're going to survive the bump? Oh, just about. Yeah, I think everywhere we stay is like four star hotels with a porterage service, which is very posh. I know one day we go to Padstow to go to Rick Stein's place, which is very expensive as far as I'm aware because I'm a member of crew. It's an included meal for me, so I get to eat there for free. Perks of the job. Which way do I need to go? Left. So, this is Wells, and my passengers have just gone off through that archway there. And my, uh, my trip leader has his own sat-nav, and he's put it up over there. He's using it for his own reference but he's angled it so that I can see it which is nice of him and uh, the older passengers don't half make a lot less mess than, uh, than the, the younger people so I've used quarter of a tank to get here in Wells uh, off up the road to the BP garage to fill up I've got the fuel cards um, and then I'll probably hang around up there I've got yeah, hour and three quarters, and uh, automatic, nice and easy, just like that. It's proper automatic as well, which, um, it's one of those torque converter ones, not like uh, what you get on the larger commercial vehicles, the, um, the, um, the what's it? automated manuals so uh, yeah I've dropped my passengers off and now I'm gonna go to the fuel station fill up and then just hang around maybe even pop to Waitrose since I know there's one here and the route to here is pretty much the same so I'm not overly needing uh, these maps because I know the way here which makes a change because the past six months it's been no idea no, where I'm going Lucky I have a sat nav. Um, but yeah, a couple of hours here, then down to Dartmoor National Park, and then to some lovely hotel called Two Bridges, uh, which will finish off our day quite nicely, probably around about four or five o'clock. Shouldn't need to do too much, maybe sweep some leaves off the floor. There's a bit of dirt under that chair there. Um, I'd even need to do the windows. Oh, if only all the passengers could be like this. Uh, it's the only flat surface in the immediate area. Um, yes, yeah, parked up in Lidl, which is one of a myriad of choices in Wells. Wells isn't that big, but for some reason it seems to have a massive load of supermarkets. You've got a Morrison's just down the road that way. There's the Waitrose that I've delivered to. There's a co-op in the middle of town. I think there's Tesco's out the back somewhere. There's little here. There's like five or six massive supermarkets in Wells. I'm not quite sure why you need that many. It's a bit like that other place. Where is it? I can't think. Where is it? There's a Waitrose there as well. There's like Sainsbury's and Asda and a little And an Audi. Melksham, that's it. Melksham, Melksham, Melksham. Supermarkets everywhere. And again, it's not that big a town either. But 
So yeah, I'm now on break. Not that I've had hardly any today. I've already had nearly two hours worth of breaks in about six hours. Um, we're after this Dartmoor National Park um, via the back road. So I'm just going to sit here and look up the route. And other than that, easy day, even though this is the longest, hardest day, or the one coming back from Cornwall to London could be. It's way, way easy. It's like six, seven hours of driving max, if that. Oh well, now four, four hours, 14 minutes so far. Easy enough. And that's from the depot as well to the pickup point, which is three quarters of an hour. But yeah, easy day. Easy day. <laughs>